All right, so, so thank you again for the time. Really appreciate it. And for some of you, usually I'm used to doing the conversations by myself. And I often open by, by talking about my wife, you know, like, because she's inspired me to, to keep going, even in times when I thought like giving up was, was yeah. more beneficial. Yeah. And one of the things I learned from, from one of my visits in the States, and I sort of took it, and when this guy said it, I was like, I feel the same way about my wife uh, mm -hmm. as well. So there's something I always say, and, I, and today the, the evidence is here. Yeah, and that is, my wife is so hot, as you can all see. <laughs> and, and if she ever decides to leave me, uh, we are going together. So, in a crowd of witnesses, <laughs> so, so we are in it to, in it to win it and in it for life. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So, so like, like they share with you our names, we've been married for how many years? 14 been together for 17, right? Mm. Mm. And we're blessed with three kids mm. okay. uh, that, are, that are fully released. And another one, uh, we've got an album dropping in a couple of months. So yeah, we've been blessed with wonderful kids. And yeah, we're here to talk to you about it. And we thought, what, what do you talk about uh, when you've got a lawyer and a money coach? Yeah. Who are married? Ooh. Um, yes. And we said, let's tell them how I make your money. So so we wanted to talk to you guys about how we met mm -hmm. and sort of give you guys an idea or a picture into how what we were thinking about when we were going through that process and how sort of family, finances, friendships, and all that other wonderful stuff sort of played out in that. I hope that that's helpful. And you remember, we're here to serve you. So if you don't want to hear that version, tell us what you want to hear, and we will uh, adjust because you've already fed us with a meal. So, <laughs> <laughs> so are, we, are we happy with that, sure. with that flight plan? Mm. Yeah. All right. yes. Great. So... <laughs> So I'll start, I'll start it off. Um, the first time I saw Jim, I was in choir practice. Hey, don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> he said, come with a willing heart, not a, not a gifted, gifted type. <laughs> so I was in choir practice, and um, she just came over, and, and, and for a moment, choir practice stopped, because everyone in our, in, our, in, our, in, the, in our choir sort of knew her and liked her. Like, she was that lights that people stop practicing to greet her. And some of them were like, ah, so when are you getting more stuff? And I was like, okay, so that means she must sell some stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And very nice individual. And I was like, oh, she's nice. And we just, what, did we speak? No, we didn't. You just were just hi. introduced, yeah. And that yeah. was it. And that was it. And she just said, tell them what you got about me. <laughs> 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 so um, I went back. I, I worked as a junior matron at a high school, a girls' high school. So I remember going back and phoning my best friend then, and I said, Ah, you know, I met this guy. It's just something about him. I don't know what it is, but there's something. Mm -hmm. And you can continue. So uh, I saw it and I was like, Oh, that's a nice person. Yeah, it didn't register to me. Or what registered to me was when they were telling me that she sells stuff. And she, you know, and, I, and that's the other thing is, if you become so good at what you do, people will begin to create stories for you. You just fill them in your brain. Mm -hmm. And what I'm talking about is, she used to sell. Uh, what did you used to sell? Because I got the, the, the fake version. <laughs> no, no. What did you used to sell? <laughs> now that you're here. So I think this might also help you. Um, when I was in varsity, um, my friend and I went through a broke season. So we thought, you know, it would be good for us to actually make money so that we don't get into this broke season. Mm -hmm. So um, we put 20 rand together and we asked her mom to buy us earrings. So she bought, I think it was 10 sets of earrings. We sold them at, at 5 rand a pair. So we made a good profit. We bought more earrings until we were doing bulk buying of about 100 to 200 pairs of earrings mm -hmm. at a time. And then when we were circulating the money, we, we started buying belts. 
um, so they were fashionable belts, ones with links, ones with all sorts of things. And then from there we went into shoes. Mm -hmm. And then from shoes we um, went into dresses, mm -hmm. Chinese dresses. So they were by special <laughs> order. Terence is one of my clients and he'll tell that oh, story. Oh, he wears dresses? So so this is so that's that's the version. Like I love thank you for having us here. I never heard this part of the story. Because oh. mm. we haven't we hadn't discussed it. Yeah. Um, about what how they start and maybe you shared no no, we hadn't discussed it at all. So it's nice, I'm actually discovering something about my wife and how it all started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's just the value of, you, you've got a challenge, but as opposed to making statements about the challenge, you ask, your question, ask yourself questions, how do I get out of it? Mm -hmm. And you don't take the easy route and say, because you could have looked for a blesser, right? Very mm -hmm. good looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and she's going on. All right. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, she's with me. All right. <laughs> so when the story I got, and it wasn't even from her, it was from my friends who were in They were like, you know what? Uh, Julie's, she sells these amazing clothes. She's got anything and everything. They've got a relationship with some of these Chinese manufacturers. <laughs> so they get the best quality out of China. So she, she actually leaves college from time to time to go and get stuff. So if you really like quality stuff at a good price, go and talk to her. But make sure you are quick and you are serious when you want to buy because she doesn't waste time. And she was known as one of the few students. When, I, when my cousin, later on, my cousin um, found out that I was talking to her, she said, oh, is that the girl who wears heels to classes? <laughs> so she, she used to wear heels to lectures. Right? This is marketing, man. Right? So, and, and like, yeah, yeah, and fancy heels. And so she, she sort of became the, uh, this amazing brand. And it was of interest to me because I had a girlfriend. Yeah. So this is the conference. <laughs> so I had a girlfriend. And when I heard this, I was like, oh, we need to go and see Julie. You know, when her birthday was coming up. And the first thing I bought from her were these really nice red pumps. I'd never seen them. And we bought these. And then I was broke then. I was working as a tutor. And I wanted to get my girlfriend like a decent gift. Uh, because I, it felt like no one had really celebrated her birthday in a big way. So I was like, I'm going to buy this dress. And I went and sat with Julia and she showed me the dress and she, and that's the other thing, she wore her brand. Mm -hmm. So there are points where she's like, oh, this is the one I have, this black one that she wore even years into our marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful oh. dress. And like, I was sold, the quality looked great and I was like, this is going to make me boyfriend of the year. <laughs> I the red one for 500 rand. Only oh, 500 rand. Rand. Oh, rand. Like, guys, this one is, I'm still forgiving her for what she did to me on that dress. <laughs> you were happy with the products. <laughs> so she, she, <laughs> you were happy with the products. <laughs> what, 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 what year was, what year was, what, what year did you go to Dragon City and saw the, that dress? Right? I think it was a lot closer, it was the other side, it was after we got married. It was in 2010, 2010 is when mom passed away. It would, be, it would have been after, maybe 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. it's 20, It was before we had kids. Remember we bought that cake, that 10 so kg blanket. So, yes, tw so 2012. <laughs> How many, that was over five or is it seven years from the date, was it? Five, at least five years from the date, of, that dress cost 70 rand. <laughs> <laughs>
she would order these dresses in China. Did she didn't tell me this? It was the people. Who, you know, that thing. Check your story. Guys. <laughs> I didn't realize. I should just check the story with her. I could save myself five hundred bucks. But I thought, look, she's putting all this effort. I've been to her place. We made a commitment to do something. Uh, she's probably placed the order. She's going to collect that order. The fact that my girlfriend has broken up with me doesn't take away from the work she's already done. Mm. So I hit her up and said, hey, you know what, that girl I came with, she broke up with me. <laughs> However, I'm going to keep my word and still buy the dress mm. and still deliver it to the person who's, who broke up with me. And she gave me an opportunity to get out. But I was like, still, no, she's being nice, but look, this is probably a significant investment. So I respected her business because I was also selling clothes and I sort of understood how that can affect your economy, right? Mm -hmm. So we ordered it, she, she kept it, and I think, she, I don't know, you want to take it from there? What, what, let me start, why did we start talking? It was because of the dress. Yes, it was because of the dress. Yeah. No, the shoes. Okay. The shoes and then the dress. Okay. So, um... Terry lived with um, one of his close friends, who was a boyfriend to my friend then. Um, we're still friends with them, like many years later. Yeah. So, they're, they're still married. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they got married. They got married. Yeah, they got married. Um, you remember so. the bad advice I got? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to get there, right? The advice gave him a wife. <laughs> yeah. And also gave him a wife. <laughs> So, so, um, so Terry came through and um, he was a good customer. He was not a bad debtor. <laughs> so it was really good. Um, and then for, after they broke up, I think we became friends. And this is one of the lessons I was saying would be good, um, even in your age group, to before you court someone, before you have a relationship with someone, it's important for you to be friends. Yeah. Because um, when you do get married, um, your marriage may hit tough times and your friendship is what will keep you together. Mm. Yeah. So we were friends for the longest. I mean, one of the funniest stories, um, he took us to the movies with one of my friends, who's actually his cousin. Um, and we were all dressed in pajamas. Um, I do have pajamas. <laughs> I was dressed properly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, no, he was, he was dressed properly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, so the story was, so we became friends, and I think part of the thing that helped us become friends was when this girl I broke up with, when we were now saying, can you come for the fitting for the dress, she was acting funny. Mm. So, you know, she like kept embarrassing me, kept embarrassing me in front of her, <laughs> and kept inconveniencing her to the point where she almost missed a trip to uh, Essay to go and collect the to stuff. Mm. To Jobe, right? Yeah. Yes, to go in Essay. Yeah. Mm. So, I felt like, so we began to talk, because it first started with an apology mm. for the inconvenience, and a promise to at least, look, I'll make it up to you for just you, you know, stomaching the, the nonsense you had to stomach mm -hmm. that was happening when you were trying to, when all you wanted to do was just get a, all you needed was a size. Mm -hmm. So I, I then made a promise and I was like, you know what, if I pass this particular exam, I was doing my master's then, mm -hmm. I will take you out for the movie that is showing at that time. Mm -hmm. And I was saying this because I was 100% sure I was going to fail said exam. <laughs> <laughs> and there were needs to take this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got the mark, you know, and I just got the mark, like it was a 70% pass mark. That's what I got. <laughs> and I was like, one of, I was the, probably the only one in my class that passed that exam, like an industry exam. And most of the guys were repeating that exam. She was playing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, the fact, you know, and that's the thing, like, you know, when, like, it's amazing how, when you focus on building friendships, like when I saw her, I must be honest, I didn't have romantic feelings towards her. One, because I was in a relationship. Yeah. And, and even when we started talking, I was just like, oh, she's nice. That's a nice person. And then when I realized she got along with my friend's girlfriend, it made her even nicer to chat to because it's, it's, she's associated with people I regard as good. Mm -hmm. And when I passed this exam, and I was like, oh, let's go do that. Let's go for the movie. I called her, I'm coming. Walked over to, the, to, to, to where she was at. She, I found her with her with a friend who's actually my cousin. We only realized this later on in life. And I was like, dudes, I passed this exam. Let's go for that movie. And I'm like, well, guy, you too. So we rolled up the three of us mm -hmm. to the movie house. We 
worst movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Hairspray. Hairspray. Oh, oh yeah. 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 What? Oh, no. I, I, I didn't see it. that yeah. one. And I knew about it's it. The, yeah. Exactly. Okay, yeah. 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 It's a movie. Yeah. So it was, okay. it was bad. But what happened is, it was, that sometimes I think that's a lesson in life. Sometimes you get into a bad situation, but it doesn't mean it needs to end bad. So we talked to him. No. <laughs> you know, like, you, know, like, you know, you're laughing, and you know, I think I we probably irritated the guys in the back. Definitely. And, and I think that was just, just like, you know, like, like I was on such a high from passing that I wasn't going to let this movie take away the achievement I'd had. So we spoke, and we, you know, they were in their pajamas, and you know, we're laughing, and we walked back home, the two of us, and I was like, this person's really fun to hang out with. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just began to talk as mm -hmm. friends. Yeah. So from there, um, this is where our stories then diverged. Yeah, Jenny's got his own version. Where we are going to and I've got my own. To, to come and help us out. <laughs> so we, um, I used to go to River of Life Church mm -hmm. um, in Grahamstown. And we had a ball um, that was... Like a was, dinner and dance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dress up and all of that. So I was selling tickets, and then I said to Terence, you know, um, I'm selling tickets for the ball, mm. so do you want to go? Then he says to me, oh, okay, how much are the tickets? So a single ticket, I think, was was like 100 rand, and a double ticket was 180 rand. 160 rand. Yeah, it was cheaper. So he says to me, oh, so it's cheaper. it's cheaper to get a double ticket. So I was like, oh, okay, who are you going with? Then he says, do you have anyone you're going with? And I said, no. Then they go to work and work together. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's fine. Money, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> so, my version, yeah, it's you know, man. so my version is this. This is that. <laughs> 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 you know, you, 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 you see, I think for me it's a lesson that we see things differently. <laughs> uh, so our differences, so, so none of us, like, and this is the thing that, like, when you get married or you get serious in relationships, sometimes you begin to look at our partner like something's wrong with them, right? Mm -hmm. When they don't disagree with what, when they disagree or they don't act the way we want them. And the lesson we've learned is there's not, it's not wrong, we just different, right? Yeah. So, and weird enough, it's, it's sometimes. It's like our differences are what sort of bring us together, so yep. to speak, right? So you accept, oh, she looks at this, she does this. Uh, so the my story, which I believe is the true story, <laughs> she said, we've got a ball, and I had no intention of going to a ball. I was not going to go to a ball by myself. Who goes to it? Who dresses up <laughs> <laughs> to go and to dinner by themselves? And then, you know, they, when the music is playing, you'll be like, okay, should I go? Like, so... I then said, okay, so what's the ball about? She explained, no, we found raising. Well, no, that's a good cause. And I was like, and they're like, okay, so how much are the tickets? Like a hundred grand for a single, and then if you're doing a double, okay. And I was like, so what are you going with? Because I just wanted to find out, is she just selling tickets? Or is she, is she asking me to go? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, well, I know, the double is, what's she said, oh, the double actually seems, it's, it's a better price. And I was like, then she said, maybe we can go together. <laughs> So we went, but interesting, like at this point in time, I'm not, I'm like, cool, because she's fun to be around, and I was like, because I was thinking, is she's like, my head was like, does she want to sell me a ticket, and then I'm going to go to a church function, I don't really know anyone, who am I going to ask out anyway, who's going to want to go to a church, ball? just too many issues, right? But I was like, ah, maybe if we go, I would be fine, because she had also See, managed to the truth. No, no, no. And that's why I said yes to your request. <laughs> <laughs> and then my friend, and, was, and then when I realized my friends and also my friend, uh, who's married to her friend, um, was also going, I was like, oh, that makes it even nicer. At least we're going to have some company. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have someone who I can sit with in case, you know, she's up and about and doing stuff. That's how we went to the ball. And I remember... When we were at the ball, we took uh, a couple of pictures, and I sent those pictures to my mom. And that's another lesson I learned: is that you know. Don't send your photos to your mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> you must. And 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 I realized that you know our parents want the best for us, mm. right? Mm. 
lives, even though they may not always show it or they may not know how to articulate it. And it's useful to listen to what they have to say, <laughs> especially when it comes to important things like who are you going to be dating, who are you going to marry, right? Mm. And for me, I learned it because I had been in, so, so I don't know if I told you this, Nyari, who's her friend who got married to my friend Gardner, mm. I was like, Nyari, this relationship thing is not working for me. Do you have any friends? Mm. Because, slap man, you are awesome. Mm. And my friend gets to eat all this nice food. I also want to eat nice food. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, the so friend, the <laughs> no, but she used to stay at our house, but she would come and cook. We stayed off campus. So, then, she was like, ah, man, I can't think of any friends of mine. And the other friends were, old, were like much older. I was like, ah, okay. So Nyani said, oh, this is my friend. I was like, oh, nice. If she knows Nyani, she's good people, right? Mm -hmm. When I sent my picture to my mom, my mom called me back and says, Tavi, this is the one you should marry. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was like, and I was like, eh? And I was like, mom, this is just a friend. And then I was like, no, 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 Shaman. This is the one you should marry. And when I went home on vacation, it's like, okay, Tavi, let's have a conversation. Ooh. I know your other girl, if you other girlfriends you've had, look, I'm not, I don't get in your business, but you know what, I sort of put it across and say, at your wedding day, I'd love to say more, something more than, she's got a good heart. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to me to say, can you see how beautiful it is? <laughs> she's got a good heart. And I was like, okay, well, I get the memo, I get the memo. And she's like, hey, <laughs> myself dating you uh, because she felt very different she wasn't like the other girls I, I used to date probably that's why I kept <laughs> I was so bad in relationships right so she was very different and, 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 and hearing my mom say that made me ask the question okay what does my mom see and then my friend Gardner was like ah, yeah Gardner I need to talk to that <laughs> after this call he's like Terry don't you think I think she likes you it's like really and we were in another ball. <laughs> and I had gone there and I was like the third wheel, the three of us. They said, look, we definitely were really. <laughs> And I think they had planned to sort of put me in a corner and say, are you not seeing how beautiful that girl is? Mm -hmm. And he was like, dude, I think she likes you. And I was like, really, God? It's like, that, trust me with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him and I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, 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 you was, and I was like, oh, man, yeah, yeah. I should want to tell you, go for it. I was afraid, and, but I was like, but then again, you know, you're looking at it and say, but yeah, she's so much fun. Uh, at the time, I was a big soccer fan, and, and I realized that one time she called during an Arsenal soccer match, and I actually chose to speak to her as opposed to watch my TV. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so, so then I sat and I was like, maybe she's not bad. If she could actually get my attention on Arsenal. <laughs> so, so, but I was afraid, guys. Uh, but and, and I guess this is a lesson. Like sometimes, if you know that that this is a good thing, or it feels like it's a good thing to do, and you can't master the courage to do it, just make the decision to do it. Mm -hmm. right? The worst thing that can happen is is a no. Is a no. Mm -hmm. um, you've done it, right? So, <laughs> so, so I made I made the decision. Uh, but remember, I was still afraid. So I I went. Those who are here on Wednesday know this. I did what we call the Jairus Giri approach. <laughs> so, hey, look at this. <laughs> so the Jairus Giri approach is when... So you guys know Jairus Giri, right? She yeah. Was, she was like, after I've said it, I feel so bad. Like, I'm taking a man's name. <laughs> but it is what it is. You know, I didn't know any better. But it was an approach where it was like a blind approach to it. <laughs> so, you know, you don't really, you, you want possible deniability. So I, I sent a text message and says, will you be my girlfriend? Didn't put her name, <laughs> didn't put my name, and clicked send. You see those 33 tens then. So it was an SMS. Then you called back, didn't you? Yes, I phoned back. And we were in a ball and I was like, uh, and she's like, what did you say, send me? <laughs> the plan was this. <laughs> if she had said, if night, she had said no, I'll be like, oh snap, sorry, I said something. Before you before you plan here's a lesson, before you plan to do that, that does not work. Because when the person calls you, 
You cannot say. I said, like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she kept telling me, like, so what did Jesus send me? What, what are you, what do you mean? What he said, we need to talk. We need to meet. We need to meet. I'm on duty, but we need to meet tomorrow. Let's do dinner tomorrow. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like there's no answer. And already I'm losing my <laughs> so, so just background, Terry was very frugal. Um, early days. Thank God that has changed. So um, we went to this dinner um, at a beautiful restaurant. Guido's, eh? Gino's. An Italian restaurant, one of the two. Um, so we got there and um, um, Terry didn't order anything. So I had a starter. I ordered water. Tap, he wanted tap water. Tap water with a lemon. Um, Which is free, by the way. We see you. We see you. We see Yes. So I had my starter, I had my main meal, I even had dessert, mm. and he watched me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Peter. Did you even offer me a slice? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he tried to convince me um, that it would work, you know, I would be his girlfriend and all of that. And I was traveling, I think, in about a few weeks mm. for a couple of months. So I said to him, you know, I don't do long distance. So let's see this, you know, much later. Um, and just to backtrack, I was also um, sort of assessing him because I had done a course called Women of Destiny. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that were taught at the time was, you know, you need to, to know what you want. You need mm -hmm. to be careful. That's good. And I had, I had a list that I had written good. to good. God to good. say, you know, God... I yeah. want a man who doesn't smoke, who doesn't drink, who's faithful, who's loving. I had a whole list. I think it had like 12, 12 bullet points. <laughs> oh, <wins>. that's a long list. But he satisfied each and oh, every one wow. of them. Oh, wow. So, yeah. <laughs> when the girl is ready, the boyfriend appears. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so that was it. And, and for the young ladies, also for the young men, I'd, I'd encourage you, you know, mm -hmm. you, you must be clear about what it is that you want yeah. and don't deceive yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some things that are negotiable, there's some that are just non-negotiable. Yeah. If you find that this person doesn't meet a certain thing that is a non-negotiable, leave it. Yeah. Because it's not going to get... So what, what are some non-negotiables? What were non-negotiables for you? For me, non-negotiable was, um, a non I wanted a non-smoker, I wanted a non-drinker, I wanted a person who was going to wait. Um, for us to be intimate until we're married. Mm -hmm. okay. So that for me was like a deal breaker mm -hmm. and someone who is faithful. So faithful in what sense? Um, a one woman man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, what about what about prayer Bible? Yes, that too. Um, that was actually the top of my mm -hmm. list. Um, someone who loves the Lord. Mm -hmm. Someone who is prayerful. Um, good looking was also on top of the list. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and, and, and someone who had um, direction, mm -hmm. someone who had vision. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you'll find that if you're going to meet your person in varsity like we did, um, none of us had anything much going for. Yeah. For ourselves, mm -hmm. except school and the businesses that we did on a small scale. Um, but, you know, for me, it was very big that he loved God and he had a vision. Mm -hmm. I, I could tell that, okay, in the future, we're going to be set. Mm -hmm. And I thank God <laughs> <laughs> it came to pass. And, and also another thing was um, being prayerful about it. Remember, if we backtrack a little bit, I had shared that when I saw him, I said to my friend, you know, there's something about this guy. Mm -hmm. Not that I liked him, but I just said there's something. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but there's something. And um, even at the time that he was um, shooting his shots, um, it was something that I did. saying no, eh? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was something that I did pray about, and um, I had a peace in me um, about him. So that that also then motivated my decision to end up with him, and here we are, seventeen years later. Mm -hmm. So, 
It's, 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 it, if I look back, because I've still got my journals from back then, mm-hmm. I would pray about things, I'd speak to God about it, and um, even my criteria was there, I prayed over it, and I look back and I'm happy to say, God, you know, you ticked all the boxes, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. So I would encourage, even as you're on your journey, um, to be clear about what it is mm-hmm. that you're looking for, mm-hmm. because marriage is for a lifetime. Yeah. 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 yeah, so 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 she's eating this food and I'm thinking I'm losing money already <laughs> and it's still a no, right? Why you, pay, you <coughs> did you pay for the dinner? Yes, yes did, you did. did. Oh, yeah, that was the, it seemed like that was the, the script. Yeah. I thought she was gonna bring out her money but, but like you're looking like she's eating a starter. Mm. Now may dessert and she's mm. ordering this drink that actually cost the price of two drinks. And I'm like, wow. But like, as we're chatting, I'm like, I then began to realize, I really like this person. Like, you know, you're talking to them and the way she's responding is not what I'm used to. And the reasons for no make a lot of sense. Mm. And fortunately, I had my friend who had prepared me for if things don't go according to plan. <laughs> this friend of his. No, I guess. There are people who give you bad advice, I, but... Um, I don't know how it works. So I'm going to share this story and I hope you can explain to them what was going on. <laughs> so my friend had said to me, Terry, these are the notes. You are going to ask her out. Maybe he had an insight. So maybe do not try this at home. Please don't do this. <laughs> just, 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 like, especially disclaimer. Now. But, but I guess but we must share. Right? <laughs> and, and I was convinced, like, look, you know what? This relationship, or this person is the person I need to be in a relationship with now. Like my friends had given me the awareness, and I realized that, man, if I don't take this chance here. So, at that time, I'm driving, right? And my friend says, Ish, if you've got time, why don't you guys go and see the monument? Because I think him and his girlfriend would sometimes go. Because the monument was the highest part in the, in the town we stayed. Mm. And our town had, a, had an area where the, the affluent neighborhoods, and then like there was the high-density neighborhood, like mm-hmm. the Lokshin. And <coughs> when, at night, when, when people turn on their lights, it gives this amazing mm. light show because they're so close together and it's just a mm. huge area. So when you're on top of the monument, it's so beautiful. It's like, mm. really sets, sets an amazing sort of atmosphere and an environment. So I thought, let me go and ask her out, ask out again where the environment is more romantic mm. and, you know, <laughs> uh, at that time again. Right. Right. So I said, look, would you mind, before I drop you off at home, if we go to the monument, you ask, right? Um, and she was like, yeah, sure, we can, we can, we can go. Um, went to the monument. And my friend had said, Shama, there's a moment you need to look for. That if, you, if she's going to say yes, you can go in for a kiss, and you know she's your girlfriend. And, like, and in my head, I was like... Well, yes, master. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I was like, I hear it. Wax on, wax off. I'm quite it. <laughs> and we're going there. And we are talking. Like, when we get there, we're talking. We're, it was also like the conversation. Like, the more I spoke to her, the more I realized that, oh, man, this is the person that I really need to be, to, to be in a relationship with. So we're talking, and then, I, you know, I think, was I showing you the stars? You were showing me something. <laughs> 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 and then a moment came that I thought, okay, man, this is what God wants. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. It is time. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. And what, 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 what is it? Like? Please explain for me. No, then he just turned around and he kissed me and I kissed him back. Oh. And then from there we just went back. <laughs> we just. They're like, let's go home. <laughs> Someone's, you know, 
But but for, for me it was just sometimes, and this is the worst example, but I just wanted to share it with you guys, because that's our story. Like, mm -hmm. We can't do anything about going back. But the lesson I also was learning there was that there's certain things that you have to then, once you've made a decision, eliminate the option. Yeah. Eliminate the option. Mm -hmm. And, and th that also then means that your decision-making process must be very cr crystal clear. Yeah. You must know yeah. that this is, if it's a relationship, this is the relationship. And why is this the relationship? Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the intention and what is the desire that has got me to this decision? Mm -hmm. So I had to tick those boxes. For me, I had spoken to people who were near and dear to me. And my mom had spoken to me and given me that assurance that this is, this is something worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the approach may have been a bit awkward, wrong, but I think in life you must get to a point where you, you, you realize that good things, you deserve good things, but those good things will not come to you easily all the time. Mm -hmm. And there are some points where you have to take risks that could, that could go totally wrong, mm -hmm. but you do it anyway, <laughs> because of the joy that could come if you get it right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah, I think a few weeks later, that's when she actually officially said yes. I thought we were dating from then. <laughs> so, but, uh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I must say yes. yes. Mm -hmm. so. And, 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 <laughs> and, and let's, let's, let's talk about some of the conversation, the conversation we had. Because it's one thing to say, yes, I'll be your girlfriend. It's a totally different. It's easy to obtain. Right, like, like, but hard to maintain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So getting a girlfriend can be easy. Mm -hmm. Maintaining one, mm -hmm. totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Buying a car, you can afford it. Yeah. But maintaining it, totally mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Starting a business is easy. All I have to do is start it, but maintaining it and growing it mm -hmm. are totally different things. Yeah. And 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 if you if you if you want to make sure that you can maintain it, you must set the standards on the front end. Right? So, what is our standard operating procedure in this relationship? Mm -hmm. What are the things that we are agreeing we are going to do? Because our definition of relationships will vary. We come from different spaces. And for me, being in a relationship would be shaking hands or hugging. For her, being in a relationship would be having sex. So you need to understand that are we equally yoked? Yeah. So, what was that conversation for us? So, um, we sat down. I think we even had a paper, hey? Yes. Uh, and wrote down. This is what I'm expecting in the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so expecting love, expecting fun, expecting growth, <coughs> um, you know, encouraging each other, things <coughs> like that. And um, this is what I don't expect in the relationship. And uh, both of our lists, the first one was sex. Mm -hmm. we, we both agreed. So there was no pressure on anyone. Yeah. And it was just no. At yeah. no point was it going to happen until we're married. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, we didn't want, um, both of us didn't want people that drink, um, both of us didn't want smokers and all of that. So nobody was going to be picking it up anytime in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So we were very clear about what it is that we wanted mm -hmm. and what we didn't want. So um, that helped yeah, set the tone. Good. And then three weeks into it, Terry then just throws a bombshell and he says, you know, I'd want to marry you. <laughs> I was like... Did I say that? Yeah. I said I want to be in a relationship with someone. You said you want to, to. You said you'd want to marry me. Not like that. Like, then. You did. <laughs> Don't do this, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm saying, I'm saying, I would like to be in a relationship. No, you said I said I'd want to marry you. So I was like, oh, too soon. I mean, it's just no, three weeks. No, it was the day after. <laughs> it was three weeks. Asala. It was three weeks. I even sent a message. I'm like, ah, can you imagine that guy? <laughs> I don't remember this, but anyway. Yeah, like, like, you were still so reeling like, from the kiss up. The <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but I think for me, one of the things I wanted to make very clear uh, in the relationship was I'm not just dating you for the sake of yeah. mm -hmm. uh, having a girlfriend. My intention mm -hmm. in this relationship is to get married. Mm -hmm. um, and not to just, I'm not seeking and just trying, wanting to play around because mm. I felt like my parents had modeled a picture of marriage that I desired. Yeah. Mm. So low-key, like, what I may have not shared is like, my personal, one of my visions was to get married by 21. Mm. 
Yeah. Because yeah, that was my desire. <laughs> like after uh, after <laughs> I went past, after 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 for, after I, I for, uh, left the vision of becoming a priest, right? <laughs> 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 so, 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 yeah, so I wanted to be a priest. Then that uh, sort of disappeared towards uh, uni- closer to university. And then I said I want to get married at 21 because my parents had modeled marriage or given me the impression that marriage is this beautiful thing. And in my head, I was like, if it's this beautiful thing, I'd rather get into it sooner than later. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So I approached every relationship of mine. I didn't I date too often, but I approached every relationship of mine asking myself, so what do I need to do to get to a point where I can get married to this person? Mm. That didn't mean that I wanted to marry every single person, but I was saying, how can I get to that relationship that feels so good for me mm-hmm. that I can say, ah, this is it's going to be fun doing life with this person. Mm-hmm. And, and I think those are some of the things that I was sharing with Judy early on in our relationship because I think we had, had a conversation on, we, we, we hadn't, you know, the things that you write down and the things that are going to come up that you hadn't anticipated would come up. Yeah. And one of those things was, what do we, how do we treat exes? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. My policy was simple. X means ex mm. right? You are ex completely. You took my money, you took my time, you took my emotion, you left me broken. I don't want to see you again, right? I'll say hi to you if I must, right? If I must. If I must. But if I don't have to, I'll let you go. Keep, keep on walking, right? That was my policy. Judy, on the other hand, didn't have uh, that policy. She still sort of spoke to. The, ex, the exes that were that were within a, a sort of line of sight. So, I think when we shared, I think we kept sort of discovering each other after the same we be together. I realized that's a big deal for me, and I think probably that's where I was coming from to say, look, I want to get married to you. And for me, I don't think I can do that in my head with someone who's going to be talking to the exes. Why is this a bit weird when you see some of these exes and you're like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> then you look at yourself and you're like, okay. <laughs> you're like, yeah, but you're like, stop talking to your mom. <laughs> um, so, so that was an area where we had to have uh, this, this discussion. And we say, why do you see things that way? And so the conversation was, why do you see things that way? And I had to explain. Why. I thought, to say, for me it's difficult because this, I had feelings for this person. So for me to continue to speak to this person, it, it opens up a door. Mm. That if we're not getting along, I can. It's easier for me to pick up the phone and say, "Hey, how are you doing?" And it can turn into another, into a mess. So mm. that was my my reasoning. Mm. And I guess yeah. mine yeah. on the other hand was um, with um, like I think there was one or yeah. two at Rhodes. Yeah, um, we were friends. So I mean, yes, the relationship didn't work out. But we could still have a conversation mm-hmm. and, you know, there was no hard feelings. Mm-hmm. People need to move on with life. Mm-hmm. So it was one thing that we needed to discuss and what was our position in terms mm-hmm. of the relationship. And we needed to agree on that. So um, you'll find that even as you court, even as you get married, there are different things that you, you may see things differently mm-hmm. in some areas. But the important thing is to communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, what your position is and why you think that that's the correct position. Yeah. So at some point you may then change your mind and take the position of your partner yeah. um, or retain that position and he may take your position. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing is communication mm-hmm. in all of it and coming mm-hmm. to an, agree- an, an agreement yeah. on how you treat people or how you treat things or situations mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah, Because I think in, in any relationship, the, the place of agreement is really the place, the place, the place of power. Because yeah. mm-hmm. whatever you agree on, even if it's the worst thing, <laughs> agreement is buff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? If you look at even the Tower of Babel, those guys agreed to do something stupid, and it was way more. <laughs> 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 right? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, so I think you you want to be very mindful to not get into relationships. Don't say <coughs> stuff. Let's agree to disagree. Yeah. That 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 creates separation. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then also understand when you're in a relationship, do I find places of agreement with this person? Mm. Because it can't just be about how they look or what they have. Mm. Because those are things that are disappearing. My wife is ridiculously beautiful. Mm. But that may not be the case forever, right? Mm. Things will happen in life. 
we may get into, you know, I don't want to speak about it, but things will happen where if you are saying, I like this person because of their body structure, mm -hmm. kids will be born and things will change. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So after the, the, the glossy stuff goes, what is left? Mm -hmm. It must be character. It must be the friendship. Yeah. So it's one of those things. And friendships is developed when we are two people who are interested in, in each other's <coughs> well-being. Right? Mm -hmm. And we are so obsessed with doing things for each other. Like friendship, one of the definitions I came across is two people exchanging obligations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. I do a favor for you. Have you ever noticed when someone does something nice for you, if they're your friend, you feel like, mm, I need to get back at this person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you may not say it, but like, have you never noticed? Mm -hmm. Snap, they bought me lunch. You're like, ah, wait, I'm going to catch this one. I bought you, I bought you lunch. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what makes the people you call your best friends are the people you consistently are exchanging favors. Mm -hmm. You're like in a competition, you don't know it, but you're in a competition to say, who's going to show the other that like, we care more than for each other? Mm -hmm. That's why friendship is one of the most, like, someone was saying, sharing the story of, um, what's that dude? Joe, 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 yeah. In the Bible, right? <laughs> that like, his kids died. Uh, all these are things like, you know, but isn't it weird that of all the things the devil was touching, the devil never took away his friends. He didn't kill any of his friends. And there's this idea that if you, a, a, a man or a woman without friends is dead. Because it's in those friendships that you develop, like when we look at our marriage, the only difference between our marriage and maybe someone else who's not married and in a relationship is sex. That's the only differentiator between a married couple and an unmarried couple, in the strict sense of it, if you, if, you, if you think about it. And that's why this is the confusing bit, that when you start to bring sex before it's time, it creates a covenant relationship without the commitment. Mm -hmm. So really, it creates the tension. But when, when we come over on this side, first we must become friends, because we do not know when we come together whether it's going to be explosive or as enjoyable as we thought. But if we are friends, we'll, we'll give each other grace and figure out how can we make this work for both of us. Do you get what I'm saying? And because we're married, we've accepted the responsibility of saying, hey, we're going to find some stuff on the other side that we weren't expecting, but hey, I'm going to be with you till death do us part. Mm -hmm. So that gives the person the permission to be vulnerable because they know that this is a lifelong partner. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's almost like that friend who you know, like they're friends who you've been, uh, who you've been through things with, mm -hmm. and they've stood at your side every single time. That now you don't even have to ask them whether they mm -hmm. are with you or not. Mm -hmm. That's marriage, mm -hmm. right? That's 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 what marriage is about. That you get to a point where you trust each other so much that even when you feel like things are not working out, like when we started the, the business, <coughs> and I felt like I was an absolute failure, you know, having moved cities from Harare to come to Blohaya and then live at her parents' house mm -hmm. and thinking we're going to stay there for a couple of months and then it got a year and something. That does something to your confidence as a man. Mm -hmm. And especially if you are in tune with your culture that says the husband should be the provider. And you've misunderstood what provider means, by the way. Mm -hmm. right? You've made it totally financial, mm -hmm. which is not entirely, it's part of it, but not all of it. And you are in this place where you are failing to be a financial provider. You can't even provide a roof over your family's head. You are staying with your wife's. And there's a season, there's a point where I spoke to him, and because she's my partner, I shared with her and said, Look, I think I failed you as a husband. And I failed to provide you with the things that I think you deserve in a marriage. Right? And what did you say? I said to him, we end this together. It's a season, and I don't think you failed. You started something, and God can only grow it from here. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So it's the beauty of you know the beauty of being in a, in a in the right sort of relationship, right? Mm -hmm. When you've got someone where when you are feeling like you are absolutely useless, mm -hmm. and you share your vulnerability with them, they're not like, hey, now I just share no good as right? They're with you. They're like they they understand. <laughs> That I'm here, to, I'm here, I am a helper, and a helper helps complete them. Mm -hmm. So you may not see yourself as the, as, as the achiever. That's why I'm here, I'm here to help you see things that you cannot see at the moment. Right? Mm -hmm. right?
Good times, man. <laughs> Very good. Right. I don't know how, how many minutes we've got. We can, do we stop there? <laughs> yeah, I think that's... Uh, yeah, it was eight more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so just a few, yeah. So, a few questions and then we quite here yeah. tonight. Mm -hmm. Terence, <clears throat> you've spoken <clears throat> to some of us, a few of us, um, about the obligations to the extended family uses yeah. at, um, at this stage you've been married 14 years yes. um, what is your primary obligation to her family and what is your primary obligation to your family oh that's a good one you go. Still go. um one of the things that we did when we got married was to agree on what we can do and what we can do um, my parents, specifically my dad, said to, to us when we, just after we got married, say, don't fit us into your budget. Okay. Don't plan for us. If we need help at any point, we'll ask for it. So there was never any obligation to my side of the family. Okay. Um, and if they needed help, they would ask. But there was no standing obligation. And then on his end, um, it wasn't expressed to say that we expect you to do this, mm. but um, there were requests to say, can you do this, can you do that? And they were recurrent in such a way that we realized that, okay, this is an obligation that we'll probably need to pick up. Um, for example, paying the helper at the time. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, maybe I could do it. Yeah. So, so I think from Julie's side, there wasn't that much of an expectation or expressed expectation. Um, there were some needs. And, and, and from our end, there's the aspect of appreciating that we want to honor our parents, right? Mm -hmm. And you never want to see the people you love go through a hard time if you can do anything about it. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but there was an aspect initially where we felt we must, it must not be made an obligation, it must be something that we make a decision, a choice sure. to participate in based on our ability. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't feel like a tax where you are paying it even if you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So one of the discussions we had early on in our marriage was to say, how do we help our family members? Because there's this schools of thought that say uh, it has to be, if I give a dollar here, I need to give, give a, a dollar, dollar there. there. If I give, and I was like, that's stupid, right? Because the needs are different mm -hmm. on, the di on, the, on the different sides. Mm -hmm. So we said to each other, we are going to help to the degree that we are capable for the things that people actually need help with. Yeah. If your family is fine on the groceries, there's no need for us to send groceries. But if my family is not, we definitely yeah, send yeah. groceries. Yeah. And we're not going to keep a tally and say, how much have you sent there, how much have you sent there. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of expressed obligations, not so much, but you could sense that there was an expectation, especially on my side. And on my side, particularly after my mom passed away, because my dad felt as if, you know, he was not capable of, of sort of running, and he had said, Expectations. So there was an aspect of him wanting to maintain a lifestyle and potentially me financing mm -hmm. that lifestyle. Okay. And initially, we, we, I must be honest, I did the stupid thing of wanting to satisfy that because, uh, you know, in my head it's my parents and our culture says you need to take care of your kids. And sometimes you'd be reminded, you know, I sent you to school. Uh, and now it's your turn to. So, so here's the lesson. Uh, that I learned later on is that our country has gone through some really weird financial seasons. And some people who had even made some decent financial choices mm -hmm. got the short end of the stick. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Mm -hmm. And some had made some decisions that had they worked out, they would have not needed to come and ask their children for help. And I believe my dad was one of those. Mm -hmm. But the things did not play out the way they did. Mm -hmm. And our culture or our, our culture not being fully expressed and explained to our parents fully creates this expectation that your children are your pension. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. like when, we're, when, we're agrarian, when we're an agrarian economy, you, the more children you had, the more, cho the more labor you had in the field, right? So that means probably the more productive you'd be. And some people have just taken that same mindset and said the more children I have, the more streams of income yeah. <laughs> I potentially have. Yeah. So we had that tension, and we resolving it was getting to a point where we, we realized 
There is no getting out of this and saying, I'm not going to send you anything, I'm not going to give you anything. But the best way for us to continue to honor our parents is to choose, is to pick a lane. And our lane was, we're going to help with the house. Get you a helper, make sure that the things are, are, are well. When we can, we'll do groceries. But we picked something. And here's the beautiful thing about picking something. Because black tax is a thing that's going to stay on. And if you look at where the economy is, <laughs> you guys are not exempt from right? yeah. <laughs> so, so unless the country becomes this wonderful place, expect it to come. It may not come from your parents. It may come from an uncle. It may even come from a friend or a cousin. Yeah. Right? Who expects you to help them out. And they'll express it by the kind of language. And we have people who call us and we already know it's showtime. My wallet has to, you know, something's shaking off, right? Yeah. For us, it was picking that name and saying, this is what I can help you out with. So that when they start coming with a list of other things, I should say, hey, by the way, remember, I'm not saying no, I'm saying yes to this. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So sometimes the easiest way to say no is to say yes to something that you can manage. Mm -hmm. So they can't accuse you for, of not supporting them. So I don't know if we sort of answer it, but... That yeah. is what I needed you to say. Oh. You, you, when we had that gathering in December, yeah. that's one of the things you talked about that made a lasting impression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay. Yeah. That was a good good business plan on Julie's side when the when she still sold you that that dress. <laughs> the, um, yeah, because I mean she could have said uh, you know what I actually bought this cheaper. Let me because you guys are friends, but then she stuck to that more than I think that's really um, a yeah. It's, it's a real lesson, you know, because you're not going to change because of how um, you know like when you're in business and you it's your friend, you know the story, you're sympathetic about it, and you're like. Let me just take down the price and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Oh, yeah. But sticking to, because it's going to affect you, or it didn't affect the economy at the time, but <laughs> <laughs> the, like in other business, it will affect you economically. Yeah, yeah. And I was just thinking, yeah, so many times you didn't compromise with people around you, but then she stuck with that. that yeah. The fact that she stuck with the price, even though she knew it was hurting you, but you know. But, but to be honest with you, and I think yes, the, the list, I don't think she thought she was hurting me. <laughs> because, because the thing is, I came to her. Mm. I saw the dress and I honestly felt like 500 grand is That's a lovely. really good price. And I think the lesson there for me, the lesson there for us is that whatever you are going to sell, mm. be so confident in what you are selling mm. or in what you are doing. Your confidence is what gives value to what you are doing. Mm. Not the thing you are doing or the thing you are selling. Okay. Your so, confidence. Yeah, it's your confidence. Your, 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 your belief in yourself and the expressed belief in yourself and in what you are doing is what people buy first. Mm -hmm. It's the quality of the offer. And she made a compelling offer in the sense that one, the way she carried herself, mm -hmm. the way she offered the dress, it wasn't, she, she, wasn't, hung, she wasn't hungry for a sale. Mm -hmm. She didn't, at the whole time, like, I only knew the price after saying yes to the product. Are we together? Mm -hmm. She didn't start and say, oh yeah, by the way, this dress is 500 grand. No, that's why people say no. Mm -hmm. Because you started with a thing that I'm not interested in. Uh, I didn't come to buy a price. Mm -hmm. I came to buy a dress for my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So speak to the desire that I'm seeking. Mm -hmm. And she spoke, no, this dress look, look like dinner. Can you see this, uh, this trim? Like the one I bought, you can wear, work. So she started showing me where she could wear it. And she started showing me how... Other, like, have you, how many people have you seen when, and I'm like, man, I'm like, oh, so special. <laughs> one, it's nice. Two, no one else is wearing it. Three, I, it's, it's going to put me in a league of my own. Four, it's going to match with the shoes that I bought before. And I'm like, yo, she's hitting all the marks. I came out there wanting to force her to take my money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she had sold me on all the benefits I was seeking, mm -hmm. even some that I didn't know I was seeking. Mm -hmm. And only after I had shown and then interested in saying, okay, so what's next? And she said, oh, yeah, it's 500 rand. And she didn't even say, like, 500 rand, feeling like she wanted to apologize. Mm -hmm. She said 500 rand, the same way, the same way, it's 50 cents. That's like, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, this, and I was like, of course, man. And and that's, that's sort of what it was. I think the other thing I, I think we, we didn't mention was 
you know, when we're sitting, you want to be in a relationship with someone who challenges you to be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Both sides of the table. Like, she, when we were writing down our list, she, there's a point where she says, I've got this book, I need you to answer these questions. <laughs> and the questions had, you know, what are your dreams? What are your goals in life? You know this. Where do you want to go? Yeah, where do you want to go? Where do you want to? Do? What places do you want to visit? And I'm like, yo, I'm in South Africa. This is as good as it gets. You know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember she made me write something, right? And I remember saying, I want, I'm going to start a business, and it's going to mm. be a principal business, and I'm going to help a lot of people. Mm. Da, da, da. And I wrote it down. And do you want know a good partner does to you? just doesn't make you write stuff down or just doesn't make you say stuff. She comes back a couple years later and says, do you remember this? <laughs> Can you see this? How far are we with this idea? Yeah. So you want someone who pushes you, who keeps you accountable, and continues to encourage you to get to, what, to the ideal picture you set for yourself. Because that's what got me to a point where I believe, it's, it's amazing to look at something that you, like, like man, we did that almost like oh, 20 years ago. Isn't it amazing that we did it? Mm -hmm. Like, we've got that business, we've started that business. And this is the beautiful thing about life, is that the stuff that you write down, even as an individual today, mm -hmm. like, keep writing down the picture of the future you want to, to see. Mm -hmm. and, be, and, and even times where you are, and, and you know, when you are grateful for things that have happened to you. Mm -hmm. And in your moments when you are down, when your moments when you need direction, and you go back to those things, you would be amazed mm -hmm. at how far you've gone. That, what you are going through feels like nothing compared to where he's, he's pushing. Like I remember reading that and I like you know you, like I chills run down my spine. I was like, wow, what? How amazing is the power of words? Yeah. That if, yeah, yeah. That was Very a message. Very good. Mm -hmm. I still got the book. Yes. Yeah. If <laughs> you're yeah, still a few years, she's gonna come back. She's gonna come that back. That one. Like, that <laughs> one. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I think for me, one more question. I think yes. it's the most interesting of your eyes. But uh, it's young guys. What advice would you give someone who's in the second year university? They do not have any source of income. They are dealing with their parents saying, you ask them, when do you want to get married? And they're like, oh, probably five or six years. Mm -hmm. But they're thinking of dating now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How would you because someone say, hey, when I get to know each other, or, you know, it's so healthy, and, you know, yeah, there's so many. Mm -hmm. How, yeah, I, I would love to hear from me and hear from you as well. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. Very good question. So, um, growing up, it was one of those where I was told that, you know, don't have a boyfriend, focus on your schoolwork and all of that. Um, but one thing that really helped me um, discover myself was um, the course that I referred to, Women of Destiny. I got to know um, more about what I want. I got to be clear, even in my own mind, what I want um, and pray through things. So when I met Terry, I was 23 and um, I was in my... Was in my penultimate year, eh? So yeah. she's third year. Fourth year. Yeah. Fourth year. Yeah. Fourth year of university. And I wasn't looking for a boyfriend at the Actually time. Wasn't. Um, I had, I, I had cool. just told myself, I'm just going to finish varsity, then I'll find someone mm -hmm. when I'm in a better space and I'm not, and I'm not focusing on, on, um, on school. Okay. Um, but along came Polly. And um and it was one of those where I think at the time because I prayed over it, I believed I was ready. Mm -hmm. And it was more a friendship with a commitment and nothing more. We did not have soul ties because we, we were not intimate until we married. Yeah. So purity was one of the things that um Helped. And um, yes, there's that aspect where you say, okay, maybe I'm in my second year, maybe it might be too soon. But I, I think it does help if you're able to be clear about what it is that you want. 
um, be clear about what your boundaries are um, and still know where you're headed, even in terms of, I'm here to do school, I'm here to get my degree. Mm -hmm. And yes, you'd rely on your parents um, for income and all of that, but one of the things that I learned um, in varsity was to earn an income for myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, you find with some girls, they will rely on a man in varsity to take care of them for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not a reason at all because you can do it by yourself yeah. as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to do it. And then funny, we, we, we did business with Terry and Varsity. And um, we were even able to buy an air ticket to the US. <laughs> yeah, with the proceeds from the business. Mm -hmm. So it's important to also um, be self-sufficient because even if you're going to get into a relationship with someone, um, you should be able to help and contribute in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and my recommendation would be not just to get into a relationship because there's someone available, mm -hmm. but um, prayerfully consider it and you must be clear as to what you want. And get into it, <laughs> you know, we've said this, much as our children are young, but um, um, I've shared with the children, Terry's also shared, our desire is when the time comes, you will meet someone mm -hmm. that you will court and you will marry that person. No hopping person to person, but you will just meet one person. That's our prayer. Um, you will meet that one person at the right time, and that's the person that you will get married to. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that would be it for me. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Just, just to come back to what Judy was sharing, I remember when I met her. She had a clear picture of what she wanted to do with her mm. life. You get what I'm saying? Mm. I remember her sharing, she had told her class that she wanted, she was going to work at the International Criminal Court in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's a lawyer, by the way. And people laughed at it. People yeah, laughed people laughed. Because she was saying, you're in South Africa and you want to go to like one of the most pristine courts mm -hmm. that handles world matters. Who are you? Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And guess what? She worked at the International Criminal Court mm -hmm. that she said she was going to work at. That mm -hmm. was amongst the, 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 like your second job, right, out of college. Mm -hmm. And that's just the power of knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'd like to think that contributed in part to her decision whether or not to get into a relationship. Because she had called, she had pictured an ideal picture, uh, she had pictured an ideal life for herself in the future. And when other guys were coming in, the question was not no longer, do I want to be in a relationship or do I want to have sex or not? It is, does this help the picture I'm painting mm -hmm. or does this take away from the picture I'm painting? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel like that's a much easier decision to make yeah. than do I want to have a boyfriend or yeah. do I want to have sex or not in marriage? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because you've got something that you are pushing and striving to get to. And you can tell when you're associated with something that's not it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think one of the things with relationships, you want to be very mindful of them. Because the moment you begin to get close to someone, um, intimacy soon follows. And intimacy is holding hands. And you have to be very mindful. Without guidance, it can get to a point where sex, you know, we often talk about willpower. Willpower does not work. Willpower does not work. If willpower worked, have you ever asked yourself why Jesus had to quote scripture when he was being tempted? Mm -hmm. And not say, you know what, I, I won't do it. You know, I'm working hard, I'm not doing it. No. He had to quote scripture because he had to have something he could stand on that was unchanging, that didn't rely on his own ability. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because our own ability, guys, when you're not in a relationship, when the emotions are like this, the flowers have come, or she said something, or she's wearing something that's like, or he's done, it can get very, you can get very clouded in emotion. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it, if you don't have something that you have told yourself, I am pushing towards this. I think one of the things Judy was big on was, I want to get married because I want to break the curse mm -hmm. or the generational yeah. curse of women who fall pregnant yeah. or women who never get married. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? I'll fall pregnant if I'm having sex outside marriage. That's the, that's the curse is perpetuated. 
I will fail to get married if I don't have boundaries or if I'm getting into a relationship with the wrong kind of people. Does it make sense? Yeah. So the thing is, the, the picture, what she was looking at was not the act. She was looking at what the consequences mm -hmm. or the result she mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe when you look at second year, the question should be, one, have you come before you can start telling some other person's child that I want you? Do you want you? <laughs> yes. 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 Do, you want to do, like, do you know you <laughs> enough to say this is what I have to offer to me first before you start offering it to someone? Mm -hmm. It's like, am, am I comfortable in my identity or am I using that person to cover up yep. Mm -hmm. for my weakness? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that Good. goes to second year, third year, Good. fourth year, until you've got to a point where you can actually love yourself, see value in yourself. You have mm -hmm. no business talking to someone else's child. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and that's why friendships are key because it's in those friendships that you, because sex blurs the lines. I'm telling you. Right? And, and I tell you, like, I think I shared with other guys that sex is a beautiful thing. I think the mistake we sometimes make, we make it seem like, ah, sex is this horrible thing. Mm -hmm. Then you do it, you're like, but they were saying it's not a nice one. <laughs> it confuses. It's a beautiful thing, guys. It is, I am telling you, at the right time, you are going to be like, oh, Jesus, what? You know, it, it will strengthen your faith, I'm telling you. <laughs> I get this. All joy, all joy, all happiness comes with responsibility. So when we are having sex, there's the possible outcome of a child. And if we are not ready for the child, the enjoyment we have will be overshadowed by the sorrow of raising another life that we hadn't planned for. Mm. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Or if you are sleeping with someone who you haven't built, where the commitment is not strong, they have not married you, then you get sick. That's a consequence. Mm -hmm. And you can't go around and throwing pity parties and saying, oh, you know what, it was just my first guy. Yes, that's what happens when you do stupid things. It doesn't have to happen ten times. Mm -hmm. Once is enough. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So when we're doing these things, one of the things you, you have to ask yourself is, for this thing that I'm enjoying, am I ready for the consequences that come with this thing? Yeah. Like, everything has consequences. Yeah. They're enjoyable if you've prepared yourself for them. They're terrible if you've only focused on the pleasure. And, and this is how the devil works. We, were, we In our men's group, which we always speak about. You see... The devil entices you with things that are already yours. Hmm. They are already yours. Hmm. But he wants you to take them before their time. Hmm. Are we together? And what he does, and because they are already yours, that means when they are being tempted to you, they, are, they feel like they are, they are pleasing. Hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Hmm. It promises pleasure. It promises control. Because you feel like, I'm the one making but done at the wrong time, in the wrong setting, what that does is it enslaves you and it dominates you. To the point where you don't want to do that, but you have gotten so deep in it, you can't see a world without it. Does that sort of make sense? So I think when it comes to relations, and thanks to George for us, really think around those things. Because the consequences are terrible. If done in, I think that's why the word speaks. Do not awaken li love before it's time. Yeah. Yeah. Because awakening that thing, if it's not its time, it's going to cost you. I think it's, I guess that's why they call it the joy of the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> People are realizing this thing is for marriage. For you. Do it in marriage. Mm. Yes, do it in marriage. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Good stuff. Yeah. It makes sense that you guys pray for us and then we can just kneel here and just do it. Good opportunity. And Father, thank you for the tables you set before each and every one of us. Father, we thank you for each and every person in this room. We thank you for Jay and Sarah, Lord, for their obedience and 
them moving in your way, Almighty God. Amen. Bring us together and align us to come together as brothers and sisters to discuss and share things, Almighty God, and speak on life Amen. and the abundance of life. So, Father, we thank you that as we get ready to adjourn, Almighty God, that each and every one of us may be fruitful. Amen. That, Father, you will call, your spirit will cause us to multiply, to replenish this earth, Almighty Amen. God, with your goodness. Father, we pray that we may become effective colonizers, Amen. Almighty Amen. God, leading the people, colonizing the earth with the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray that, Lord, you give each and every one of us dominion in the different areas that you have put before us. Amen. Father, I pray that you strengthen each and every person, that to the person, Almighty God, that was growing tired or weary, that, Father, you have brought refreshments to mm -hmm. them, Almighty mm -hmm. God. That as they go through this program, Almighty God, that they may allow the transformation in their life to take to take root, Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And that they may be salt and light to all they meet. Mm -hmm. That they will take the things that they have learned mm -hmm. over the season and be those who can be trusted to share it with others, Almighty God. Because mm -hmm. the gifts that they have received are not for themselves, mm -hmm. but for their, they are for the blessing of the saints. Mm -hmm and the expansion of the kingdom. So, Father, we pray Amen. for good health. We pray for prosperity. Amen. We pray for peace. We pray for joy. Amen. In the mighty name we pray.